Well, let's take this across to Sneha Mordani, who is being joined in a conversation with Deepak Sapra, the CEO of Apis Service and Dr. Reddy's uh, labs. Uh, Sneha is in, in an exclusive conversation with him, throwing straight across to you, Sneha. Thank you for that, uh, Chetia, and uh, welcoming Mr. Deepak Safra on the broadcast. Thank you so much, sir, for your time here. Uh, good news for all of us as uh, Dr. Reddy's vaccine, essentially, the bridging studies of uh, this vaccine is what you've been doing uh, in the country for a while now. It has got emergency use authorization, sir. Do tell us a little more about when can an average Indian expect that Dr. Reddy's Sputnik V can be used against COVID-19 in the country. Thank you, Sneha. So India will start getting the Sputnik V supplies from Russia in May. These will be initial and limited quantities, which will ramp up over the next two to three months. There are two routes by which the quantities would come into India. One is through the product that's manufactured in Russia and imported into the country. The second is through local manufacturing, which we will also be starting in the next couple of months uh, to start delivering the vaccines from the India-made product. The process for the technology transfer is underway, and we are well on course to start delivering the India-manufactured vaccine also in the next two to three months. Till such time, we are accelerating the access to this vaccine by bringing in the product from Russia and making it available in India. So, earliest is when can we expect? Is it by May or is it by June that we'll see doses of this vaccine in the country, sir? So, uh, we will start seeing doses of the vaccine in May, towards the uh, second half of May. And there will be a progressive ramp up, which will happen over June and July. When will the Indian companies, I believe there are six Indian companies that are going to be manufacturing Sputnik V in India. When will this manufacturing process also really start? Yes. So uh, the uh, process of absorbing the technology, scaling it up, that is currently underway. I expect that the Indian manufacturing sites will start delivering Sputnik in the June-July timeframe. As you uh, correctly pointed out, there are six manufacturing sites. I expect at least two sites to start delivering in the June-July timeframe, a uh, couple of sites in August and uh, two in the September-October timeframe. So it's a progressive ramp up with different sites being at different stages of technology absorption and uh, uh, increasing the quantities as we go along over the next few months. You did mention that the first tranche of the vaccine is going to be coming from Russia. Just do tell us what is the kind of quantity that we are looking at, at least in the first tranche. Yeah. So uh, at an overall level, uh, we expect we will have sufficient quantities to vaccinate about 12 to 13 crore people, so about 125 million uh, people doses within 2021. So that is the uh, broad plan. Now, within that, the initial quantities are going to come in by the imported route. Uh, as I said, the initial quantities in May are going to be small with a progressive ramp up. So in the first two to three months, I expect we would have enough vaccines to vaccinate somewhere between two to three crore people in the first three months. So you're saying that starting May, we will, uh, sometime by August or so, we would have inoculated about two to three crore people in the country using Sputnik V that we've bought from Russia, essentially. That is correct. That's a fair uh, reflection of the situation. Mm -hmm. There could be an increase in the numbers because some of the Indian sites would start coming upstream and that would add to the numbers. But I think on a conservative basis, this is the number which we will certainly reach by the end of July, early August. How is the government going to procure the vaccines? Is the government looking at procuring it from you all directly? What has been the conversation about, Mr. Sapra? Sure, sure. So, uh, as you know, the government has been uh, has been coming up with a lot of changes to its vaccine policy. The most mm -hmm. recent one uh, came about a few days ago. Now, as part of this, there are two very, very important points that uh, have come about. Number one, imported vaccines uh, can be brought into the country and can be delivered to either the private sector or to the government. Yes. As far as the India manufactured vaccines are concerned, there is an obligation on every manufacturer to supply 50% of that to the central government and the balance 50% can be between the state government and the private sector. So we're going to go by those guidelines and that is how it will play out over the next few months. 
as far as our discussions are concerned yes we are in discussions both with the central government and with a large number of state governments uh, many of whom have expressed an interest in uh, sputnik and that is a discussion which we are having very transparently with them in terms of availability of vaccines the ramp up and their own plans with regards to uh, providing a coverage to a certain number of people in the respective states what is going to be eventually the cost of the vaccine the cost at which you are going to be giving this to the central government given the fa fact that uh, companies like serum and bharat biotech are giving this to the center at a special price of 150 rupees a dose is dr reddy is also thinking along the same line sir can you give us an idea about that so at the moment i will not be able to give you any numbers but what mm -hmm. i can tell you is that we are in the process of determining the price with the goal that the price should help maximize the access of sputnik to as large a number of people as possible in india as possible uh, as i explained to you a little while ago uh, the initial quantities are coming in via the imported route uh, then it's going to be manufactured in india clearly there will be a cost difference between the product that's manufactured outside india and brought into the country and the product that's made in india in addition yes. to that there are certain other aspects which are relevant for the sputnik vaccine which is that the cost of logistics storage transportation uh, all of that needs to uh, needs to be factored in so we are putting all of this together and i believe that in the next few days or weeks we should be able to come up with what the pricing will be for the different segments uh, in the country both the public sector as well as the mm. private sector. you know initially uh, uh, mr sapra the conversation was about this per dose costing about 750 rupees that's what rdi have indicated looking at the prices uh, outside of india can we expect the prices to be around this much then so as i told you i will not be able to give you a number but uh, those are uh, you know those are indicative numbers from uh, Uh, in uh, from other countries where RDIF has been selling this product, just to give you a sense, uh, this product is approved in 60 countries around the yes. world, and uh, the pricing of this varies uh, across countries. So I think it will not be right on my part to give a number and speculate because, as I said, we are working it out bit by bit on every element of the cost and make sure that we come up with a price which will be the price which will help us to maximize the access. in india you know uh, you did say and if i've got this right you said that uh, when the vaccine is obviously uh, given to us by russia we're going to be buying it from them it's going to be a little more expensive uh, when indian companies start to manufacture and when we use the made in india doses that's when the cost of the vaccine will also come down yes i think absolutely that is a very fair uh, way to look at the situation and uh, as you also pointed out there are six companies who are manufacturing uh, who will be manufacturing this vaccine in india and the goal is to use india's manufacturing capabilities the economies of scale uh, to bring the overall uh, cost down which will result in a lower price which will enable uh, an enhancement of the access to school uh you know mr sapra also tell us what is going to be the role of dr reddies in all of this you are of course in conversation with rdif to bring this vaccine to the country but what after that sure so uh the first thing that we've done is that we have conducted the clinical trials in india as you know rdif had conducted a, a large global trial now what we did was we conducted a clinical trial in india in which we made an assessment of the safety as well as the immunogenicity this was a phase 2 and a phase 3 clinical trial which was conducted uh, we got uh, good meaningful results that were consistent with what uh, the results were in the russian trial and as a result of that we got the approval from the drug controller in india uh, the global trial uh, presented an efficacy of 91.6% on the vaccine now in addition to the clinical trial what we have also been doing in india is that we have been running the regulatory process we are uh, making sure that all the systems are in place to ensure the consistency of the quality the consistency of the vaccine irrespective of where it is manufactured across the six sites in india we will be also managing certain other aspects such as the pharmacovigilance and the safety aspects and the data and the data for people who are on the vaccine to make sure that it is completely aligned to the overall global situation on this vaccine and also in line with the recommendations and requirements of the indian government what right. we will also be doing hmm. as yes. a next step in addition to all of this statutory uh, elements uh, is to also assess and test sputnik for new variants 
and see how Sputnik is going to be acting against those new variants. So this process is currently underway. And uh, this is also an additional element which we'll be doing over and above the clinical, regulatory, quality, vigilance aspects that I just mentioned. Okay. Uh just to give us an idea about this, since a lot of people ask this question, is there a sense that this is a vaccine which is acting against at least some of the mutating variants in the country right now? Or is this something that you are yet to understand? So this is a uh, this is an assessment which is currently underway. Uh, okay. The Malia Institute in Russia has made an assessment of this against the UK variant, which was the first variant to come about. There is an mm -hmm. assessment currently underway on the South African variant. We're also working very closely with the Department of Biotechnology in India and the National Institute of Virology to make an assessment on the Indian variants, the double mutant Indian variant, and also now people are talking of a third uh, triple mutant kind of a variant. So the goal is really to look at all these variants which are impacting populations in a large manner and make sure that we have that assessment complete with regards to the applicability and effectiveness of Sputnik against those variants and not just the original coronavirus. Which is extremely important given the fact that it does appear that variants are wreaking havoc in the country right now. Also, Mrs. Sapra, I want to ask you, uh, what about children? Uh, we are starting this inoculation process for those above the age of 18, but what about trials on children? Right now in India, we only have Bharat Biotech which is conducting trials for those between the age of 12 and 18. What about uh, Dr. Reddy's as far as Sputnik P is concerned? As of now, uh, the trials and all the things that are being assessed are on adults, so people above 18. Uh, the trials on children, we're having a discussion with our Russian partner and the Gamalia Institute on this aspect. They have some thoughts on this, but this is yet to be crystallized. So as of now, the focus is on adults. All right. Uh, Mr. Deepak Sapra, thank you so much for your time and for your perspective on that important story. Sputnik V at the end of the day is just another weapon. Uh, in our arsenal really to just fight this battle against COVID-19, uh, this infection that really has been wreaking havoc across the country. Thank you so much, Deepak Sapra. Back to you, Chetty. Yes. I, I just... Uh, hello? Yes. Yes. I think I just want to uh, conclude, Sneha, by saying that uh, Sputnik will be a very important part of the solution. Uh, it's a safe, efficacious uh, vaccine with 91.6% uh, efficacy and more than that, I think there's excellent real-world data from different countries wherever it has been administered. And in a country like India, the solution is for all vaccines to come together in a collaborative manner that can facilitate faster coverage of the population. And I think Sputnik will be a very important component of that solution. So that's how we are looking at it. And I hope okay. we'll be able to make a, make a difference uh, to the coronavirus situation in India. All right. Hopefully, fingers crossed there. Deepak Sapra, thank you so much, sir, for your time here. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.